Okay. What is relative humidity, wet bulb, dry bulb? What is all this crap? Okay. If you look at this, uh, I've got two temperature probes here. One is sensing the temperature of the air around it. And I'll show you where these are located in a little bit. This other one is showing a low temperature, but it's in the same air. It's in the same air stream. So why is one lower than the other? Okay, there's my two probes. They are both sitting in the same airflow, but they're reading different temperatures. This one here is just reading the temperature. It's just a little uh, temperature probe. It's actually a thermocouple. Uh, but it's reading the, the temperature of the air passing through. This one here got a sock on it. It's the same kind of temperature probe as the other one. Let me see if I can get it back. Now you can see the probe right there. If you look up there in the high side up there, there's the probe. Now, if I go back down, you'll see the temperature is about the same because I pulled that sock back. Put the sock back over it. Starts dropping down again. Probably going to end up back down around that 61, I guess. Okay, why does it do that? Okay, the reason it does that is because I've put water on the sock, I have wet it, and the air passing across it, as it passes across it, it evaporates the water. When it evaporates the water, uh, there is heat drawn out of the probe. And anytime I evaporate water, I got to absorb 960 BTUs per pound. So, as long as there's water in that sock, and there's air passing across it, it is going to read a lower temperature. Uh, how much lower it's going to read depends completely on what the humidity in the air is. If I have very low relative humidity, that simply means that there's a lot of space in the air to absorb the moisture. Okay? Uh, moisture in the air is humidity. If it's very low, then the temperature you read down here on this is going to be lower. Because more water is going to be evaporating off of that sock. Now, if the temperature or if the humidity is high, let's say we're in Florida and it's 98% humidity, the temperature difference between these two probes is going to be very low because there's no room in the air to absorb moisture. What I mean by the molecules being closer together, if I have a lot of moisture in the air, then there's not much room for more moisture to get in the air. So, I evaporate less water off the sock. I have less water that is evaporated. So, I have a temperature that is closer to the ambient air temperature than if I had a low humidity. So, it's simply wet bulb, dry bulb. Now originally, what we had is we had what we called a sling cytometer, and it was a little doohickey that had a regular thermometer on. These were old bulb thermometers with mercury in the bulb. One of them just read air temperature, just like that one does on the bottom, and the other one had a sock on it, and we would. It was designed so that you could sling it. So you would rotate it around in the air and it would give you 
uh, a wet bulb, a dry bulb, and you could determine relative humidity from that. The problem with those things was people got bored with slinging this thing around, and they start talking to somebody, and wham, the stupid thing had hit a, a cabinet, a furnace, or something like that. It break the thermometers, and then the freaking thing was done. These are better. They make electronic ones that will read humidity. Uh, they're kind of neat. Uh, they will also calculate, uh, I mean, they read wet bulb and dry bulb, but they calculate the humidity. Uh, so you can use those two. This one just came with the uh, field piece uh, S-Man down there. And so I use it. Now because of these two different temperatures, we can calculate if we take these two temperatures together, we can calculate the relative humidity. I'm going to talk more about this. I'll get into why we care for HVAC, that the air is more or less humid or not, and so on in later videos.